Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. Um, this is just going to be a short, short video uh, because I've got some questions for you guys. Maybe you guys have the answers. Maybe you guys are having this problem too. And, and this is kind of part of this whole video thing I'm doing is, is sharing my problems, seeing if there's solutions to them. And also, if I'm having the problem, more than likely other people are too. So I'm trying to aggregate solutions to problems. And so with this, one of the things, I've got this neat project going on. I'm going to be doing a whole other video series on this. So I'm not going to explain what's going on here just yet, except the problem I'm having. So this is a rather complex cut that I'm trying to do. And, and again, um, this is as far as I've got on it, is the starts of these two pockets, which, which are not complete in themselves. However, to back up and talk a little bit about the problem that's getting me here is, is over here I've got my garble controller. So garble, gerbil, whatever it's called, you get the idea. So I'm running point nine. I've done a number of videos on this thing. Uh, I've got it wired into the probiotic controller. And all this has been working great. I've used this actually quite a bit. Um, and, and you saw it, me cut spool holders for my 3D printer on it and et cetera. And it's really worked good. Now, I've used this controller with um, uh, Universal G Code Sender, uh, I don't know, Garble Communicator or something like that by Zap Maker or something, which is a pretty cool application. I've used Diesel, I've used Chili Pepper, and all that's worked great. And so, however, though, most of my cuts have been like the spool holders, very simple, you know, maybe five, ten minutes of runtime, just to cut something out. Um, this has been a more complicated project because there's there's a lot of pocketing that has to take place and pocketing takes a lot of g-code especially since i'm using an eighth inch bit in in the router to cut out the pockets uh there's a lot of movement so to cut these these pockets out i've already done one and it took about 30 minutes to get through the pockets and but the problem i'm having and the reason for this video is before I even get to the complete end, I get three quarters through these pockets, I get a port failure error from Garble that says, Garble, Gerbil, that says it can't send any more commands and it just stops right here, like you sort of see. Can't quite figure out what's going on with that. So again, it gets about 30 minutes in and it just freezes. And I've tried, um, the garble communicator whatever the heck the name is i've tried chili pepper and i've tried easel all three of them the same thing happens at roughly this roughly the same point not exactly the same point um but fairly close so i get one pocket done and it gets anywhere from quarter to three quarters through the second pocket port failure said and done and, and long story short is i have to reboot the the machine to get the port to reconnect on, on the USB. So it's not a matter I can just terminate it and start all over again, etc. This is really a pain in the butt. Um, so I'm hoping somebody else has seen this out there and can comment below and, and tell me what I'm doing wrong or what I need to change. Now, I've wondered if this isn't also a, an Arduino problem, but if it's an Arduino problem, um, why isn't it why, why, why does it take 30 minutes to get into it? Why is it sort of time sensitive or, or command sensitive as to how far it gets in? Now, what happens is all the applications show uh, G code being queued in the, in the garble buffer. So, uh, I, again, I'm not really sure if it's, if it's a timeout, if the machine is running too slow and the port is disconnecting. I noticed in, in the, the one Garble program, you can set aggressive buffering and, and, and various different things. So you can also set the port timeout. I think port timeout right now is set to 100 seconds. Um, so I don't know, maybe that's the problem. So I'd be very interested here below. I'm gonna explore this a little bit more. Uh, what I've done is I've broken up um, the, the G code, the jobs for this. I've got an indexing mark here I use to index off of, and you kind of see how this is. It's not going anywhere, so it's extremely stable. So I could just run the different jobs as, as smaller code. And that works just fine. I, I don't understand, again, it's just the longer stuff that errors out. And again, I thought it was, all right, this, this garble, and I wish I could remember the name of it. I can't. Um, 
I thought it was the problem. I've tried to get universal G-code sender working, but uh, I don't know. I've just had fits and starts with that. You know, it's it's Java based. I've installed Java, the updated, blah blah blah. So I'm not going to bore you with that piece. But the, all the other three have failed. So also, do you have a preferred um, Java, you know, G-code sending mechanism to to Garble? Let me know below what you use and what what you really like. I, I love Chili Pepper, but the big but is 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 it's pretty complex, or at least for my little bit of use. So every time I go to use it, I sort of have to relearn it. The other problem with Chili Pepper, it's not really a problem, but I think a little bit of a challenge is I've had a little bit of, I've had a few issues with the JSON server, uh, and I just hate really messing with it to, to, to get it to work each time. The Easel JSON server and setup it has worked every time for me. I've never had an issue with it, and it, it actually is pretty simplistic. The problem is, is, is Easel is a little bit in itself simplistic, and for more complex runs like this, it's just, uh, I, I don't know, I just, it hasn't been as natural feeling as I would like it to be, or I haven't been as comfortable with it for uh, bigger cuts like this. So this, uh, and I believe it's ZapMaker, it's Garble Sender or something like that, has really been a good program. It's very simplistic from the aspect. It's written in C++, runs natively on my Windows machine, and, and actually does a, has done a very good job. And that's been my go-to application. However, again, you know, I, I've been struggling with it a little bit to to get this job done. So I don't know if it's the problem with that, it's the problem with Garble, it's the problem with something I have configured. So again, that's why I'm hoping to hear from you guys. What have you had success with below? Um, because I'll give it a try and do a video on it, if it makes sense. Uh, also, am I doing something wrong? Am I missing something? Do I need to change a configuration setting in Garble? Last night I, I went through the settings in, in Garble, and I really didn't see anything that jumped out at me saying I need to change the buffer size. I know there's a lot of discussions about the small buffer size of Garble. Maybe that's a problem, but then again, I see people doing complex 3D relief mapping on machines like this with, with Garble and the shape oak over the X-Carve. So again, I'm, I'm a little bit confused as to why that should be a problem, because there's got to be boatloads of G-code to do some of the stuff I've seen. Um, you know, especially through like Aspire or things like that. So, uh, again, give it a thumbs up. If you, want, if you want to help me out, give me a thumbs up. That's the big thing. Help me out. Thumbs up. Let me know in comments below if you're having this problem, if you've seen this problem, if you fix this problem. Let me know below. Also, subscribe. A lot more coming. Um, what you see here is going to be a very neat project that I'm going to do a, actually a little a mini-series on. Uh, for basically a design I'm doing for the shop that you can do too uh, if you have CNC. It's going to be a combination of CNC and 3D printing so I want to bring the two together to kind of um, show everybody a little bit of what it's like and how the two technologies can complement themselves. I might even throw in a little bit of laser cutting for good measure too. And, and again because one of the big things about this channel is I really want to share how the three technologies, CNC machining, 3D printing, and laser cutting can, can really provide benefit because one of the pieces is, I mean, just even a few years ago, this would not be possible. I mean, I've got like, uh, what is it, at least four, four 3D printers I'll claim to at this juncture. I've got two laser cutters and I've got this CNC machine and I'm actually thinking about getting another uh, CNC machine uh, to round things out for a couple different reasons. Um, a few years ago, this would not be even conceivable to have this much technology in, in a person's basement. And I think with the cottage industry and the, the Etsy world upon us, um, you know, the whole maker zine concept is really changing from that of sort of hobbyist to low form semi production. Uh, because, you know, w with inside your own home or your small shop, you'll be able to, I think, make very high quality productive pieces. And, and we're seeing this with people, you know, utilizing this technology, all three of these technologies to make drones and, and other things like that. And while on the surface it seems hobbyist, uh, it has a lot of commercial potential. And that's one of the things that I'm doing this channel for, and I mentioned it briefly before is really the commercialization of these technologies and, and so right now a lot of what I'm doing is is I myself am playing with these technologies to see what they can do 
and to see how I can bring them the triad of these three technologies together to be commercially productive in small scales. So one of the things I think is you've heard me rambling, and, and again, time with the day job has prevented it. Um, I've developed a couple products that I do want to release in small scale, and I'm, I'm just kind of considering how to do it. And I'll be exploring those in, in future videos. So again, I'm still getting my feet wet. Um, and when I go to do that, I want to be able to devote the time to do it right, rather than just kind of throw, um, you know, bulk videos or ideas together and then have it miss the mark. So I'm, I'm taking my time with that. So if you'd like to hear more about the business aspects of this, of bringing this technology together, commercialization of it, the Etsy world, um, you know, hit me up below. Uh, one of the things I'm considering doing, and, and I'll probably do another video rather than just a ramble at the end of this video, is, is maybe even start another channel. So if you're just interested in, in this as a hobby that, that's great of how this all comes together, making things for friends and family, or if you're interested in this from a commercial setting, uh, you know, for example, how do you start a business? How do you run a business around this? I noticed that um, Bill Gregg's, some, something like that, does, does a CNC-focused uh, podcast on this topic, which I really think is good. I, I mean, he's like 90% of the way there in his podcast. Uh, the only downside that, that, that I, it's really not a downside, I shouldn't say it that way, more so challenges. It's kind of limited to, to CNC and, and kind of the scope um, is a little artsy craftsy, but you know, his, his intent and, and, and what he's got going on is really cool. So I also put a link to his podcast below because if you don't listen to it, even if you're not into CNC and you're just 3D printing, I would still say listen to his, his podcast because a lot of times, especially when he's got other makers on there that are, that are making money that are capitalizing on CNC routing, those are things which transfer into laser cutting or, C, or um, sorry, 3D printing. So, uh, again, hats off uh, on that uh, podcast. And, and again, uh, if, you, if you're listening, I know you're a subscriber to the channel. Um, really encourage you maybe to, to, to build on that podcast because you do a great job on it. Um, and so, anyways, enough said on that. Uh, subscribe, like, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.